I'm with Danny and Ken Spencer. We're going to get to it in just a second. I had a quick question for the people. What is the most horrible experience you've ever had with dropping a comic book? <laughs> with dropping a comic book. Have you, do you remember? I, I did not tell them I was going to ask them this, but I was thinking a few minutes ago. Um, and, and if you want to think about it for a minute. Yeah, I have to think about that. That's okay. I, I actually haven't dropped very many of them. Oh, Ken, that's, that makes me feel bad because I've dropped a few. Well, I have one that really I'm very oh, regretful. Oh, no, I do. I, yeah, no. I know what you're talking about. Okay, I have one I'm very regretful of. So I had, I bought at San Diego Comic Con. I used to be a Spider-Man collector. Like, I wanted to get a complete run. I bought a super high-grade copy of Spider-Man 101. 101, the yeah. first appearance of Morbius the Vampire. Right. This is going back, like, more than 20 years. Like, I'd say 25 to 30 years ago, I bought this book, and it was a couple hundred dollars. Still a key, still popular back then. Yeah. But it was, like, probably a solid 9.6 raw book. <laughs> okay? Maybe a 9.8. I don't know, but it was that kind of a book. Yeah. And I was so proud of that book. And I went to, I was picking it up one day and the mylar just slipped out of my fingers, hit the ground on the corner and put a huge color breaking corner oh crease God. in the book. That would upset me. So <laughs> years later, after that happened, I sent it in to get pressed and they were able to get it flat again but the color break was there. Yep. And I got it graded and it came out as a 9-0 and I was so irritated. <laughs> I ended up selling it for about what I paid for it. And now today a 9-0 is worth a lot more than, yeah. than two or $250, but I just wanted to be rid of it then. I just didn't even want the memories of it any longer. So thanks for bringing that back up. <laughs> yeah. Have you owned one since? No, I, I, I stopped trying to complete a Spider-Man run and sold a lot of my early Spider-Mans in order to, you know, buy other things that I collected. So yeah. I, I've been mad at comic books before. Like if I've done something to a comic book, I never even want to own that comic book again. So what about you? You remember? Uh, I do remember an incident. I an incident. I, I think I suppressed it. <laughs> and you just brought it out, but sorry, the worst dropping story, it has a better outcome than yours, but I had ridden my bike across town to Friendly Neighborhood Comic Book Store, which is a which is a we was, all, it was an old time store in Los Angeles. We all Vegas. went to the same yeah. comic book store when we were kids. It, it was so. one of the best stores in town that sold back issues. So I went there and I bought a Fantastic Four seventy two in really high grade. And I was a big <laughs> FF collector at the time, trying to do complete the run and everything, and I was so happy I'd bought this book. And I'm riding back home with a friend of mine on my bike. And I'm messing around, rubbing my front tire against his back tire. And I just, it caused me to hit the curb and I fell off the bike. And I managed to hold my hand up and keep that book from hitting the ground. But my chin hit the ground. And I <laughs> needed about 20 stitches on my chin from falling off the bike. And I was still, I had to ride home bleeding. I was still happier that the book didn't get damaged than my chin getting split open and, and needing stitches. I literally was just relieved that the book didn't get damaged. And that, that, <laughs> that's the way to do it. Yeah. Book saved. Yeah. That's hilarious. Anyway, Danny's brought some really interesting things for us to look at that I'm actually really excited to look at. So uh, Ken and I are going to soak in some books that Danny's going to share with us. So I'm going to start with saying that like, uh, in a previous video we did, I talked about how I've always liked EC Comics. Uh, when I was a, a kid in the early 70s, the, my first introduction to EC Comics was, I believe it was called East Coast Comics, came out with reprints of the original EC books, and they were about a dollar a piece, and they would reprint one issue of EC. And, uh, this comic store that we went to, they had um, those for sale, and that was my first introduction to EC Comics. And then uh, later on, as I got a little older, uh, Russ Cochran started coming out with his big giant um, reprints and hardback. And I love those things. I still have my uh, set of Tales from the Crypt that I was bought in the late 70s and um, read every issue. Uh, I have my set of Weird Science, read every issue. And it's just my personal belief that those are some of the best comics ever published. Like, not during the 50s, but I mean, ever some of the best covers, some of the best stories. 
Um, issue after issue was high quality, but I never, I never really collected a lot of the original ECs. They were always expensive. Um, even when I was young, uh, when I would buy, you know, these DC books for a dollar or two dollars, ECs were like twenty dollars. EC had different genres, and so like I only collect the science fiction ones. Those are my favorites. Uh, I'm a big fan of Wally Wood, and uh, and I like the Feldstein covers a lot. I maybe almost equally, but, uh, well, no, I think we all like the wood covers the best. I mean, they're... I, I like those the best. They're, 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 but the Feldstein covers are great. And so um, so I just have a small little sampling of some really nice EC science fiction I thought I'd share. And I know in a previous uh, video you guys did uh, Famous Funnies with the Frazetta stuff. This is Incredible Science Fiction number 33, you know, as a nod to Frazetta in a previous famous funnies that Frazetta did earlier. 213 is the issue. Yeah, so this is a really nice copy of Incredible Science Fiction 33. I think, um, I have a hard time telling you like what's my favorite EC comic, but if I had like a list of five or 10, I think that would be on my list for sure. This definitely would be on my list of the top five. In fact, you, you're the one who turned me on to like, because you used to, you had multiple copies of this at a point. I had three copies of it, and I sold you this one. Yep. Oh, great copy. I, I love that cover. That oh. is such a nice I cover. wish you had three copies of every EC I know. phone. <laughs> <laughs> I really like stuff with dinosaurs, and you start mixing it with science fiction, and it's a home run for me. So this is um, Weird Science, number 15, with... And it really awesome Wally Wood cover, and I love like the colors on there, the burgundy and this spaceship, and it's just a fantastic Wally Wood cover. Anything special about this book, Danny? That's a Gaines file copy. Anything else special about it? Didn't you tell me you were going to be buried with this concert? <laughs> Don't say that. Like you might come much? dig me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those ones, you know, when people talk about like, a book they would never let go of, like Ken has said that about some of his books. That's probably one of mine. They don't come up for sale very that, often. That issue is pretty difficult, and I don't own a copy of that, by the way. I want to say this about the Gaines file copies is I think there's a perception maybe that some collectors have that because there was a dozen of every issue that that makes them, you know, uh, easy to find, and that's not the case. It's given people a false sense that there's like a lot of the issues. The market's flooded. Yeah, because for many years, um, high-grade ECs were lagging behind other pre-code books yep. as far as price appreciation. But the reality is, is there's some of the very best books that were published in the pre-code, and the dozen copies that Gaines has does not satisfy like the desire to own them. Are you going to get that reholdered? Oh, I might, because I kind of like the new, yeah, like the new the holder. the new labels are pretty cool. Amongst the uh, EC purists, so though, Holdering comics is like a sin. <laughs> they just want the books in raw. You know? So next one, sticking with the dinosaur theme. This is Weird Fantasy number 17. One of my favorite covers. I love that cover. I also like dinosaurs, rocket ships, all combined on the cover together. Dinosaurs and rocket ships. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and that's also a game style copy. So on these three dinosaur covered books, there's a different artist for each one. So this next one is Al Williamson, and I love this one. I love it as much as the other two, really. But you know, the 15 is my favorite. But this one's awesome. Is this is Weird Science Fantasy number 25, with a great Al Williamson cover, and I believe that's a cover that um, is representing a Ray Bradbury story. I think The Sound of Thunder, if I recall right. And yeah, they travel back in time to hunt yeah. or something like that. Yeah, it's a great story. I love the rocket ship on the side. It, it's it, it's so much bigger and it's just blowing up. Yeah, it's great. I like the picture box as well. Well, that, all of the weird science fantasies were done in that theme. Yep. Like that. Yeah, and they have a couple different style of rocket ships on there. So this yeah. one... It's kind of sticking with the dinosaur theme. This is Weird Fantasy number 22, the last issue of Weird Fantasy. And uh, at first glance, that might look like it's a dinosaur bone, but if you read the story, it's actually a giant human baby's <laughs> skeleton. 
Are they small or, so or was the baby big? No, he, he was a giant. And so it was a, a child's um, skeleton. And uh, I just kind of like, it's the last issue of the series. And I think it's a kind of a neat cover. And here's the certificate of authenticity if you haven't seen one from the... From the Gaines. From the Gaines files. Yeah. This is a comic that has a Wallywood cover. Uh, I think a lot of collectors feel it's one of their better wood covers. I like it a lot. I think Ken likes it even more than I do. And he's got a, a very nice copy of this book as well. This is a Weird Science number nine. Yeah, I love this cover. This is probably my favorite EC cover. I, I think this cover is fantastic. I like the whole U.S. Air Force thing going on outside the window. With yeah, crazy I love this cover. Aliens. <laughs> I mean, those guys, come on. Yeah, you know, Feldstein Sucker had fingers. good bug-eyed monsters, but Wood had even crazier looking monsters. This just screams 1950s to me. Those aliens, I mean, those are, those are some of the best aliens that have ever been drawn. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so this next one is going back to the title Weird Science Fantasy and another wood cover. This is just a nutso looking alien. Really uh, great looking space woman. And Yeah, this is kind of what I'm talking about. You got the best of every world in this. You got rocket ships and huge aliens. <laughs> you know, if there's anybody watching this who's never like appreciated Wally Wood's work, I just implore oh, them to go story. find covers of these books and look at them because I think he's one of the best cover artists who's ever drawn comics. And like you said, the interiors on all of these are just as good as the covers in, all, in most cases. They have such great artwork all through yeah. them. Yeah. This next one I think you're going to like because it kind of like parlays into something I think you like a lot, which is DC horror. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. I feel like Neil Adams must have been looking at some of these books when he started doing the covers to House well, of We Mystery. should definitely have a conversation about that aspect. Because, like, EC had kids on the covers of comics. Definitely and... has a lot of <laughs> Adams. Or Adams definitely drew a, drew a number of covers. Yeah, if you look at any of the Bronze Age horror Neil Adams covers from House of Mystery and House of Secrets, there was always a bunch of kids in the covers. And EC was doing that, too. And this is one of the very best um, some people call this the Mars Attacks cover. and mm -hmm. That's a terrific cover. Oh, I say Weird Science 9 is my favorite, but then I look at that, and it's like, that could be my favorite, too. I think the idea, if, I, if I'm guessing right, is that if I was a kid and I saw that comic on the stands, I could, like, identify, look at these little kids and these aliens, you know, because this was their audience, was 10- and 12-year-old boys, probably. Well, it's funny because I've looked at this and other other stories a lot, and there's like a conversation happening, and and they don't look as scared as they should be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And and it, it it if I was a kid and I saw this, I would absolutely have to buy this comic book. This is by far one of my favorite covers, and of all aliens, check that dude out. I mean, his face is melting, and he's not alone because like look at all the other spaceships coming. So. They also put a, a small dog on the cover, which Adams did as well. There were a number of pets on the covers of his Yeah, I got to believe that... Even the know, dog doesn't look as scared as he should be. This is the Weird Fantasy 21 with a Frank Frazetta cover and Al Williamson. Either one of those guys is a great artist on their own. You combine the two, and I just think that's an awesome cover. Who didn't buy this book? And, and I mean, there's a caveman looking guy on there too. Yeah, I, I want to know <laughs> what's he going to do. And uh, <laughs> he's got a spear, doesn't he? Look at the background on that too. Just those pastel, a volcano going off, and yeah, all kinds of stuff happening there. Great cover. I like the fur on her boots. I mean, they just <laughs> they had to add like that feature, like you know, she was getting ready to leave for her space mission. She goes, "I like those boots with the fur on them." Thank you very much. This next one is, is kind of crazy. I had to bought this book in lower grade, but I was fortunate enough to buy like a really super high grade copy of this. It's another Gaines file copy. This is with a Feldstein cover. And you know, Feldstein was pretty crazy with the aliens too. And this has, <laughs> this has an awesome story in it. I'm not even gonna talk about the story because I think people should go out and find a reprint of Weird Science 8 and look for the story that matches this cover. But this is a 9-8 copy of Weird Science 8 
And again, this was only number four, so I'd love to see what number one, two, and three look like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this guy is awesome. That's a Feldstein cover, and I think he maybe is underappreciated compared to Wood, but he, I do. Yeah, he's, he has a, definitely a different style, but really great artwork on that one, too. What a nice copy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible. Beautiful copy. This is another Gaines book. This one's a 9-0. This is an earlier Weird Fantasy. This is number six. Another Feldstein cover with a lot of robots on it. Love robots. You look at the robots in the window. I've, I've heard some comments about <laughs> what are they doing. And Hello there. Speculate for yourself. Hello there. <laughs> but, uh. You like robot covers too, don't I you? I do love robot covers, yeah. That looks really, really nice. The colors are amazing. I like the robots. I think that they're, the design of these robots for when they came out is pretty, it's a great design. Yeah. Really nice book. Yeah, this one looks great. So, this is my last one I have to show. Um, this is another weird fantasy. I, I have found that obtaining weird fantasies has been a little easier than weird sciences. I don't know if that's just my luck of the draw or if, you know if weird science is more popular with collectors but this has a feldstein cover this is weird fantasy 12. what i like about this is it just seems different than the other covers it's got like a snow scape on there and there's a comet and a rocket ship and this is another games copy this is number nine of 12. i feel like i've seen that that copy you know that book less often than i see other ones for sale yeah yeah, it's a pretty cover. It's a nice copy. Regardless of what the grade is, if you buy a Gaines book, you're getting a book that's got a super high quality to it. I mean, yeah. like nice pages, um, nice gloss. They're usually very structurally sound books. Hey, thank you for showing us those great books, and that yeah. was fun. Yeah. Um, great covers, high-grade books, nice set. Are you, are you going to be collecting those? you have a lot more that you want to put together in that set? Oh, yeah. I, I, I only have like a fraction of the, there's like 54, 55 EC science fiction books, and I only have a handful. So, you know. 30 more years? Please don't bid against me when you see that. <laughs> I, already have no, Ken, I already got Ken bidding against me. Thanks for stopping by and let us know what you think. If you have any questions or comments about the books, Please leave them below. Thank you.